So I, I wanted to first go through the th number one question asked to the Copilot Studio team, and that is, when do you use what? What is the difference between Copilot extensibility with um, the Copilot Studio? What's the difference between building custom Copilots in Copilot Studio versus Azure AI Studio? Because everyone has an opinion on this. And so what I want to give you is kind of the definitive on where we've landed on this. Um, and to help make it make sense for you, because um, let's start with M365 Copilot extensibility. In the case of this, this is the concept of I would like to think of it like a smart speaker. Um, you have a smart speaker, you're not going to change how you're going to talk to it. You're not going to start texting the smart speaker in, in your house uh, just because you decide you want to. Um, so there is a channel limitation that's associated with it. Then you have other things like you're not going to tell your smart speaker that it can't set, uh, set a timer or an alarm or answer weather questions. Those things are off limits. Those are out of the box capabilities. And so M365 Copilot, for, ex for example, has out of the box capabilities. But what you can do is you can extend a smart speaker to be able to control your thermostat at your home. Right? And so being able to think about extensibility of M365 Copilot in that manner will really help you understand what you're doing there. Keep in mind, M365 Copilot is all about personal productivity, helping you get your job done, being able to make you more productive, and it has a ton of business value in that capacity. And then extensibility is just being able to add a little more to that. So, and just so you know, and yes, if you, have this and you purchase it, building those extensibilities, you get all the value and all the capability of, of the um, Copilot Studio and all the premium connectors and all the greatness that comes with Copilot Studio, but it is not an all you can eat buffet. If you are going and going to do something outside of extensibility, and this is where you start talking about custom Copilots. And custom Copilots can be a little confusing. There's probably a lot of people going, well, the Azure AI Studio is pro code and Copilot Studio is low code. It's actually really not the differentiation between the two. Um, matter of fact, in Copilot Studio, because in Copilot Studio, we also own the Azure Bot framework. So we are actually both, we do what we call fusion development. We allow pro code, low code, and no code capabilities. We're actually an end to end SaaS platform that is going to provide the entirety of what you need to be able to build a conversational application. Now, that's great, but what is the definition of Copilot? A Copilot is a conversational application that uses generative AI technology in order to service the user. That's really all that needs to be. So can you have, can you build a Copilot with just Azure AI Studio? Yes. Can you build a custom Copilot with just Copilot Studio? Yes, but let me explain the difference in what you're really dealing with. One is uh, Azure AI Studio is all about customization to models, being able to take these models and make those models implemented in a way that you need them to be implemented, and you have a whole host of different models that you can choose from. Copilot Studio is actually not about models. It's about conversational orchestration. And what is conversational orchestration? It's when I understand what you said and I route the conversation accordingly. Well, guess what? That's also what M365 Copilot's doing. It's a conversational orchestrator with out-of-the-box implementations. In Copilot Studio, for custom Copilots, you're starting with that blank slate. You're in complete control of it. You can determine if you, what channels you want it on. You can determine that you want to call it on the phone, you want to text it, you want it to be in Teams, you want to put it in a web chat and put it up on your SharePoint site. All of these things are completely at your disposal. But the conversational orchestration is where I can say, I want to override. I don't want to always hand something to a model. Not everything has to be generative. And not only that, I might be able to say, oh, you're asking to be able to build an RFP proposal. I'll route that to an Azure AI instance built for that. But oh, now you want to ask a question about your HR benefits? I'll route it to a different place to be able to handle that. As well as, what if you need to hand off to a live agent? What if you need to be able to say, like I always tell people, imagine you're Coca-Cola and somebody says, what's the best drink in the world? 
probably not going to be okay with generating the response to that. The marketing department's going to want to write that. So, so just keep in mind that these things are actually, so when we run into, oh, I'm building a custom co-pilot and you're getting into, well, what, how, which one should I use? The answer is most organizations end up using a combination of the two. And so if you only use one and you start in one, in one silo, you're going to hit the wall. And you're going to find that wall of probably roughly about six to seven months into your project. And then you're going to realize you didn't scope everything into your estimate that for your leadership. And then you're going to have to have a conversation on, wait a minute, I actually need conversational orchestration. Or you start in conversational orchestration and you realize you might need a custom implementation of a model. So you need to make sure that you kind of think of the two as independent. Matter of fact, this is where a lot of people, if you want to go into competitor world, the difference is Copilot Studio is synonymous with Google's dialog flow, where Azure AI Studio would be synonymous with BARD. So that's where you want to think of the difference. And you'll never see competitive, not actually competitors. We are actually uh, collaborative in the way we work. And guess what? Yes, you can build a plugin that uses conversational orchestration through Copilot Studio that uses and Azure OpenAI model. So you can actually use all three if you're trying to build something over here. So with that, let's do some cool demos. Okay, so hopefully you guys in, the, in here can kind of see, I'm gonna explain sort of what, what I'm gonna demonstrate here. What I'm doing is there is this concept called an action. And an action is where I take, if you guys aren't familiar with the power platform, there's something called a connector. And a connector is nothing more than an open API definition file or a swagger file that wraps an API. But imagine now I put a conversational wrapper so that I can actually talk to an API as if it's a person. And in this case, what I've done is I've done this with ServiceNow. And so what I'm going to show you is the approaches that you take with actions depending on how the API works because a lot of people get confused on different ways to do this. So if I come in here and I ask this, and I'm just going to put in uh, who, who I'm talking about. And so David Miller is just like a sample. And you'll see on this side, I'm making sure I've got the topic tracking on. Yep. So you'll see over here that what's happened is it kicked off a flow or on the back end. And what you're seeing happen, if I can move this where we can actually see, and I'll blow it up so that you can see a little more. So I loaded all of the user profile information from ServiceNow for that particular user. Now, I could have done this off of authentication or many different modes. I just wanted you to see that now, having a conversational orchestration engine, I can actually load user context into the conversation so that I can use it and apply it where I want. And we'll, we'll play with that as we go. So if I say, what is the status of my ticket. And I don't memorize the ticket number, so you guys get to see me do this since I only have one monitor today. You'll see that it's asking what's the incident number. Now, interestingly enough, on this right-hand side, you'll see that I ask a question. And that is because what I want you guys to understand is APIs are not all built the same. Some APIs have a definition around them and they have specific outputs and they, they structure it. Others just give you a JSON payload and it's like a database. So I have to query, I have to form a query. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a question and, it, and I'm asking about the incident number. And if I just paste this incident number in, what I want you to notice is you notice the screen changed a bit because what happened on the right-hand side is it figured out, it structured the query to input in to be able to go to that API. And now I'm getting an output, but I didn't explain how to answer this question. You actually see it saying the status is in progress, but I can have a conversation with that API, right? So I could say, when was it opened? And same exact API, same JSON payload. I'm generating, based upon the conversational context, I'm actually answering this question like this. And I can even go in and say, you know, give me more details. 
So this is the idea of me having a conversation with an API where I had to form the query, but now the conversational context is coming in and you keep seeing it coming back over here, putting in the incident number over and over to be able to make sure that it keeps the context of the ticket we're talking about. So what if I context switch over and I say, you know, uh, what is my job title? In this case, remember I got that the user's contacts, I got that information. So I already had the sys ID of the user. So I just dynamically passed the sys ID of the user into the query. And now I can have a conversation with it with a different piece of the ServiceNow API. But because I know that this is only on the user object, I don't actually have to have a topic that formed the query. I just pull the data back. And you can see it says my job is or my job title is a sales executive. I say, what is the city in my user profile? Now, and again, I'm still having this conversation. The context is in it, and you're going to see it's in it. it I, the city is Atlanta. What if I say, tell me about the weather there? I don't need to put a question mark there. All right. So in this case, what's, what's going to happen? It's going to realize I started talking about the weather. The conversational context says, wait a minute, I need to talk to the weather API. The weather API has got a form structure within it, so I didn't have to author anything. It realized we were Atlanta was in the conversational context, and it placed Atlanta into the input answer the question against the weather API. So what's really interesting is this is why when you're starting to build actions inside of Copilot Studio, which you'll see I have here, there are different ways that I've built these. I have some like get the user info, which I preformed and I actually said here, pass the user context in so that anything about the user is already there. So I'm actually preforming that as the way to query that API. And the weather one, we'll take a look at that one a little bit more depth in just a second. But notice that I have some that say none. They're not actually getting top level fired. That's because those things are databases that I need to form a structure by asking a question to get additional information to form the query. And then once I get the query back, I've got the JSON payload and I have the context that we're talking about the incident or looking up assets because now I have that context I can have a conversation with it. But just to give you guys a little double click here on the MSN weather, just so you can see how this works, because it's kind of cool how it does this. And uh, Gary Pretty in the room, you can thank him for this. This is one of his brainchilds. Um, you'll see here that how did it know to call the weather? It knew because we told it that the point to the model description, this is the prompt that explains, this is how you call the weather. We've got the dynamic chaining enabled, which means top level intent, fire whenever, whenever you're ready. And you can even see it can ask a question to the user to say, do you want me to do this? Then when we get into inputs, APIs will have inputs and outputs. So the inputs here, these are the required inputs for this. You're going to notice it needs the location and it needs units. Well, guess what? I hard coded in. I want it to use Imperial because I always want it to answer an Imperial and I'm in control of this conversation with it. And then I have a description here that explains what I'm looking for as the location input. And notice it's dynamically figuring this out from the large language model. And guess what? If I didn't answer the question, if I had said, what's, uh, what's the weather? And I didn't give it a location, it would have generated a question back that says, what location do you want the weather for? and then it would have put it in, but I wouldn't have had to author that. So that's the way we get away with that. We'll go into outputs real quick, and you can see I said dynamically generate this. You're gonna be seeing shortly that we also are going to make it where you can dy dynamically do it with an adaptive card, or I can manually author this response. And in the outputs, this is where it gets really cool. I can actually see, here's the structure of all the different things, like latitude and longitude and pressure, and all of this, which is all the API definition. Well, the super cool thing is I could select latitude as an output that can be used as an input downstream. So why is that important? It's important because what if I said, what is the balance of my checking account? 
and I don't know what your checking account number is, but I know who you are. So just as I figured out who you were to answer your job title, I could go find your checking account number, pull that in, use it as an output, uh, that output as an input to the thing to check your account balance, and then automatically just answer the question for you dynamically on the fly. Self-assembled at runtime, no authoring really required. And so you can imagine all the common conversations you can build. And all of this power is gonna be coming to the M365 Copilot extensibility as well. So with that, I will return my time back.